When using a meta framework like Next.js, there is a lot of JavaScript that needs to be shipped to the client, even for just a simple Hello World application. Next.js 13 has lowered the amount of JavaScript per page via server components. However, the first load bundle is still quite large. Let's learn how we can reduce this using the bundle analyzer and dynamic imports. So from our last lesson, I'm just going to quickly clean this up a bit and I'm just going to get rid of this Hotjar script that we ran for an example, as well as I'm just going to get rid of this boilerplate in here in our main page. And I'm just going to put an h1 tag with a text Excel tailwind class and it's going to call this home page for examples. Perfect. Now I'm going to run npm run build so that we can see the size of this page. creating an optimized production build. This might take a minute. So now that that's finished, one thing we can see here is the first load JS, because this is a server component in Next.js 13, we have zero bytes to actually load for that root itself. However, the first load shared by all is still quite large. So there's got to be ways that we can manage this, especially once we start having a lot of packages and different components entering the mix. What we're going to use to see our bundles is we're going to use the next bundle analyzer package. So I'm just going to quickly install that. We also have to go over to our next config and I already have it copied, but we need to wrap our export with the bundle analyzer. So that's gonna look like this. Now, if we come down to our terminal and we run npm run build, but with an environment variable called analyze, and we make that equal to true, and then we do npm run build, watch what happens in our um, browser. So it's going to open up three files in total. And the last one that's opening right now, that's what we really care about. So yeah, this, we have three. We have our, yeah, so this is our server modules. We have our modules for our edge configuration, as well as what's shipped to the client. So on the inquiry route I just created, um, I created a little form that just asks the user for their name. This is what it looks like, and it just submits that one field to the um, a collection I have called inquiries in a local pocket base instance. I'm not going to show you that because it really doesn't matter. What does matter is that we're importing pocket base here at the top. If I go into my terminal and I do an npm run build, let's see the build size of this. Okay, so we see right now that it's 89.3 kilobytes first load. What about if we get rid of this, because we don't need any of the information from the pocket based library until we actually submit this form. So why don't we try to dynamically import it right here before we right before we need to use it and then we can submit the form the same way however our initial bundle size will be smaller. Let's do that. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do and call it pocket base equals, and I'm going to do await import pocket base. I need to wrap this in this, and then I'm going to do dot default. Okay, perfect. So now if I run this again. Build. We should now see 
that our bundle size will be smaller. Perfect. So now our first load is 78.6 kilobytes as opposed to 89.3. So if you have a lot of libraries that you're importing, this can really reduce your first load and make your just your load times in general much faster. Okay. So I created a little modal that will pop up whenever we submit this form. And here you can see some of the logic for that. I'm just controlling it all with use state. And I'm then showing it if this value resolves to true. And here's the modal. So essentially it just has, it just says thank you and thank you for your submission. And it takes in an on close function that's void. I also imported the signout method from Firebase auth, and I just did that because I know this package is big, and I know it's gonna be good for an example, and I just console log that. Um, if we come in here, well, first I'll show you how it works. So if I submit my name, for example, you'll just see, thank you for your submission. So it shows this modal. If I, now go over here though, I realize that this is another example where I don't need this code unless, or the code for the modal I should say, unless I actually click this button or I submit this form. So what do we do about that? Well let's first see how large our bundle size is. So I'm going to do npm run build once again. Okay, so we see it's getting a little bit bigger now. So our first load is 104 kilobytes. Let's see if we dynamically import this, if we can make this a bit smaller. So I'm gonna do import dynamic from next dynamic. I'm gonna comment that out. And then up here, I'm gonna do a const, I'm going to call it dynamic modal, and I'm going to make it equal to dynamic, and then pass this a function that then imports what is modal. Oops. And I want this to be done client side, so I'm going to server side render that, or my apologies, I'm going to client side render this. So I can set SSR equal to false. And now where we render this, I'm gonna come down here and do dynamic, save that. And then let's do npm run build and see what our bundle size is. It's currently 104 kilobytes. And there you go. So you can see now that we got this down to 79.5 kilobytes. I'm gonna do an npm run start just to see this in action to make sure that this works exactly how we want it to and it's all the same. So I'll submit my name, Benjamin. Submit, perfect. So we get the exact same functionality with a much smaller initial load. Just to show the importance of dynamically importing your libraries and your components. I'm going to quickly show you our bundle analyzer once again and show you how big these libraries can be. So I'm going to do analyze equals true and then npm run build. And then that will pull up those windows in our browser again. Here we go. Okay. So if we look here, this is our Firebase auth that I just imported for example's sake. It doesn't actually do anything in the case of this project. However, you can see if you were using that, that adds 16.2 kilobytes to what's shipped to the client. As well as with Pocketbase, that adds an extra 10.74 kilobytes to your initial load. That's not good and we can really reduce that by dynamically importing them when we need them not just with the root itself. That's all I have for today. In the next one, we're still gonna talk about bundle size, but we're gonna talk about setting bundle size budgets and how you can see them when you run npm run build. However, that's all I have for today. 
please subscribe if you found this beneficial. And yeah, have a good one.